Hey there gang, Patrick King here. I've got a question today coming from Jackie. And Jackie sends in, I currently do groundwork with my horse and she knows that sooner or later she needs to yield the hindquarters and bring the front end across, things like that. I started in hand work with her and working with long lines. And she's constantly wanting to come in or change direction, etc. I'm probably doing something wrong. What's the best way for me to work both training methods, but stay clear and concise about the expectation for either of them? So first thing I want to do is clarify what Jackie's probably talking about here with the groundwork versus the in-hand work. So when we talk about groundwork, uh, a lot of times we're talking about foundation groundwork, isolating parts of the horse's body, basic education work, saying yield hindquarters, move forehand around, back up, step sideways, get relaxed, that sort of thing. Now when we're talking about in-hand work, uh, we're talking about things that are more like relaxation, unlocking the top line. Uh, eventually things like shoulders in, haunches out, half pass, you know, a lot of um, eventually building up to things like piaf, uh, things like that. So there's a, a difference there. There's a delineation in there. Um, I make the delineation basically saying that our groundwork is like uh, getting the horse's mind ready, getting the horse relaxed, getting them accepting of, you know, us basically being in control. I think about it as kind of our uh, foundational work. Our in-hand work, on the other hand, is kind of taking that to another higher level. So if we could say that our groundwork gets the horse's mind ready to work with us and willing, I would say that the in-hand work gets the body more ready to work with us and more relaxed and ready for us to ride. So that's kind of how I would make that delineation. Uh, so when Jackie's talking about the groundwork versus the in-hand work, she's saying that she's trying to do both. And that's pretty common, and there's nothing wrong with that. The challenge that she's having uh, sounds like the horse is making assumptions for disengaging the hindquarters. This is super common. When we've got a horse that we've worked with on this idea of disengaging the hindquarters, it's important to understand that the in-hand work, the purpose of the in-hand work is to engage the hindquarters rather than disengage. But if we've spent a lot of time disengaging the hindquarters, then it's really common for a horse in the in-hand work to think about swinging the hips away and facing up with us, disengaging and working to uh, kind of get us to leave them alone or get us to remove the pressure by turning and facing us. So the challenge that we're going to have with this is helping the horse to understand the difference between when we want that disengaging to happen or when we want the yielding, I'll go back to calling it yielding the hindquarters, um, because I think at a certain point, once we have basic control, we don't want to be disengaging the hindquarters. We want to be maybe unlocking them, uh, allowing the front end to travel a little bit, and that's very different. Um, but it's easy for a horse to come into an assumption like this. Now, when we're working in hand and we're engaging the haunches, and now when Jackie's talking about going back farther into the long lines, when we're working the horse in long lines, we're generally behind them at a good bit of a distance. So where we need to work with a horse like this is we need to think more on the long rein idea first to build their confidence before we go into the long line idea. So where I make that delineation is if I'm working a horse in hand, say I've got the bridle on and I'm working in the reins, I'm going to travel back to the length of those reins and help the horse understand that we want forward movement within that. If I get back too far, based on the groundwork that horse has done, they're going to automatically want to swing around uh, yielding the hindquarters and turn to face. And that's just because they're trying to do what they think is the right thing to do. Um, so Jackie mentions in her question that she's probably doing something wrong. And I don't think that she is. I think what needs to take place, though, is we need to build a bridge for our horse in this case. And so that's going to be, that bridge is going to be a connection to the outside rein when we're working in hand. Uh, and that's going to start with our basic work when we're right next to our horse. If we're working next to the horse and we're working off relaxation off the bridle, uh, moving, say, in the shoulder in or the leg yield, the forward moving position, we're going to start to connect the outside rein. When we start to connect the outside rein, we will find 
because of the neural connections in the horse's body, uh, we're going to find that when we start to engage the outside rein, the horse's inside hind leg steps deeper. This is if we've got relaxation. If you've got a horse that's tense, it's not going to work that way. We need to go back to relaxing before we do anything else uh, because the rest of this answer isn't going to make sense if your horse is tense. That's what we want to think about. So as we start engaging the outside rein, the horse engages the inside hind leg and gets a little stronger in their self. They get a little better balanced, right? We'll always see the horses in this case uh, lifting a little bit at the base of the neck. The neck and pole might rise a little bit as the inside hind leg starts to step deeper. And this is a big part of our in-hand work. It's important for developing the strength that we need in our horse. Strength through the top line, strength through the haunches to carry the rider uh, in a more effortless fashion when we're doing all the work that we're doing. So I've got, particularly, I've got a pair of reins that I had custom made to be, they're about eight feet long, um, so that they would wrap completely around the horse's body when they're connected to the bridle. That, to me, is what I refer to as my long reins. Different from long lines, where a lot of folks with their long lines, it looks and seems a little bit more like two lunge lines, right? As far as the length goes, we've got quite a bit of length coming out there. I would want to work a horse in the long reins before the long lines to help them understand this forward idea. So that if our horse, I'm going to take Jackie's horse, if Jackie's horse is thinking about yielding the hindquarters away, as I engage the outside rein and as I help to support with the inside rein, I can be back as far as the hip or the tail or even slightly back farther and still have a little bit of feel on both of those reins to help that horse understand what it is to go forward. If she starts thinking about, you know, shifting back and forth, turning into me, that sort of thing, uh, I can help to steer her just like I would if I was riding, right? And I'm going to work on a few forward steps and then stop and relax and allow the horse to build confidence with that. And then we're going to ask again from there, or maybe I might move up all the way to the bit or to the cheek or to the neck or to the shoulder, wherever that horse needs me to go so that they feel confident in the moving forward and the initiating the forward movement idea. Again, building back to where I'm working at the haunches for this. Only once I've got the horse in that position confident uh, am I going to work out on a longer line. So maybe you don't have a pair of custom-made long reins that, that's going to work at the length of the body like that. You can do the same thing with your long lines, with your lunge ropes or whatever. Um, you just have them coiled so that you've got one in each hand so that you're up just much closer to your horse to help them with that. Now... Uh, as I mentioned before, some of our horses in the groundwork and certain groundwork programs out there, certain training methods out there, do a lot with disengaging the hindquarters. Um, and if you, haven't, uh, if you haven't watched some of the videos where I explain why that's not so great for your horse, you want to maybe take a minute to check those out. We've got a lot of those posted on our YouTube channel, Facebook channel, things like that. Um, check that out because a lot of the disengaging the hindquarters, if you do it to... Uh, to excess, it, it's not going to help your horse. It's shutting down forward movement, and then we wonder why we have a host of other issues. But anyway, um, so if we've got a horse like that, then we're going to spend more time really helping them to work forward uh, as we're closer into their body before we work out to the length of the long lines. That's really important. So the bridge between our groundwork and our in-hand work, and then our in-hand work into the long lines there's a progression in there that is solely based on the horse's confidence and understanding what we're asking them to do. And the right answer at every step along the way is that when the horse starts to lose confidence, stop and start again. Make sure that when you stop, they relax, they come back to thinking, they come back to breathing, and you come back to breathing. One of the biggest problems that I see when riders are starting to work in the long lines, or even the long reins, is that when the horse gets tangled up, they're trying to fix him, they're trying to monkey around and muscle him around on the end of the reins, and that always ends up in a mess especially when someone is first beginning to start out with the idea of the long range or the long lines. Uh, you know, I, I've been preaching for quite a while. The four keys to making any of this stuff work. Slower, softer, wait, and breathe. And that's going to take precedence here as well. When we've got a challenge with a horse, uh, when it comes to transitioning from our groundwork to our in-hand work, and I do believe that we can do both at the same time. 
Uh, it's going to take a lot more of those four keys to help the horse understand. But when it comes to doing that, we want to think about moving slowly, helping to build the horse's confidence. And that might mean two steps today. And that might mean one step today. And that might mean over the next week you build on two steps each day. And, and eventually you're walking around the arena at the end of your long lines. But I would never hesitate to go back to the beginning and start again working to build the horse's confidence with that. Because we've got to keep in mind that when those things go wrong, when the horse turns around and yields the haunches and faces up with us, if we do too much, we're going to cause a panic. And in that moment, the horse was only trying to do the right thing as we have trained them uh, in the past. So for us to get into a mess with them or a wreck with them, it's just going to be counterproductive to the partnership that we're trying to develop. And that's so important to understand. And that's why I'm so glad that Jackie has asked this question, that we can help to address it in a video like this. So, gang, and Jackie specifically, I hope that this was helpful for you on your journey of integrating your in-hand work with the groundwork that you've already got accomplished. And eventually, if your goal is such, to work into the long range because there's a lot of fun that can be had. There's a lot of great development that we can work on with our horse emotionally, physically, uh, on our journey to great horsemanship. So hopefully this has helped some of you out there. Um, if you've found some value in this, give us a like or a thumbs up or you know whatever, whatever comes your way, whatever thought comes to mind. If you've got a friend maybe that needs to hear this or that you think would be helpful for, please feel free, tag them in the comments section here or share this video directly with them. Question for the day. I haven't done one of these in a while, so a little rusty on it, honestly. Um, question for the day. Do you integrate groundwork with your in-hand work? Or do you integrate in-hand work with your groundwork? Um, do you combine the two? And how do you uh, draw the line between the two? What does it mean for you to do groundwork with your horse? And what does it mean for you to do in-hand work with your horse? I know I gave my definition. I'm curious to hear yours. Please give me that in the comments section below here. And feel free, again, to share this video if you'd like. I'd really appreciate this. If, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free. Enter those in the comments section below. Send me an email. Send me a private message. Send me a pigeon. I don't care what you want to send. Uh, don't feel uh, afraid to reach out. Send those questions to me, and we'll get those here in our question and answer videos. So thanks so much, gang. You keep asking questions. I'll keep talking about horses.